Hello everyone and welcome to Dan Selmer's Tech and I hope you're doing well. Today's video I'm going to run you through the settings that I use on OBS Studio for both streaming and recording. If you didn't see my previous video on how to optimize the NVIDIA control panel that is in the description down below and that links in with the video that we're doing today. So without further ado let's jump straight on into that video. So on to OBS. Now if you're looking for just the settings there is a time code in the description down below. Click on that to skip this part of the video. However I'm talking to all the beginners. If you're new to streaming and recording, welcome to OBS. Now you will see on the interface scene, sources, audio mixer, scene transitions and controls. Now it's pretty easy and straightforward to set up but let's go through it one by one. To add a new scene you just go to scene and click plus. Now you can label this whatever you want i.e. recording, you can label it streaming, it doesn't matter, it's down to what you wish to use it for. So once you've got your scene in place, you go over to sources and again click plus. Now you can add the things in here like video capture, which could be a webcam. You can add in screen capture, which is display capture there and click OK. And then that will bring up whichever screen that you're on. Obviously it is recording my second screen. So obviously you don't want to see that, we'll just come out of that. You can even put in things like images. So you just click on it and click OK and then you can browse your images and put an image up in this screen here. Moving on to Audio Mixer. Now if you wish to use Audio Mixer for both sound from Discord or music and also gameplay, this is where you're going to get the best out of it. So I've got two desktop audios. This top one here is literally just for my game so you can hear all the sounds and all the music from my game and desktop audio 2 is so it's set up you can't hear my music, you can't hear my friends on discord and that won't come through the stream or the recording. So I am going to show you how to set up the dual desktop audio in the settings tab which leads us quite nicely on the settings. Now when you open up settings you come to general and this isn't going to affect your streaming or recording performance it's just personal preferences. I like to leave it as it is, especially the theme as dark because it does help when I'm streaming recording to see what I'm doing, but you can change your theme in there through another two different choices. However, moving on over to stream. So you've got your service, you can select here Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope if you so wish, um, but I mainly use YouTube Gaming, so I'll click on YouTube Gaming there and then server you want primary YouTube ingest server and then you've got your stream key here and you can show it which I'm not going to do for you guys so no luck on using mine but you just control and C and copy that for your YouTube live dashboard moving on down you come to output now if you've never done this before then just click simple and you're pretty much good to go with whatever's here but advanced is way better so for streaming, I've got audio track two. You can have one or two, doesn't really matter. And I'm using the NVIDIA NVINC H264 new. Now this is NVIDIA's new NVINC encoder, which does help when you are streaming and can utilize the graphics card quite nicely. I've got a dual GPU setup. Um, the reason why is because I like using one GPU just for gaming and the other G GPU for streaming and recording. Um, they've already got it baked into the silicon, but I have noticed if you've got one GPU, then it does take away the megahertz on both the core clock and the memory clock and does give you a slight dip in FPS in games. So that's the reason why I've got two GPUs here. Now, if you're using a, an AMD card, then X264, you want to use that and that uses the CPU as the encoder. And I've just left the full stream service encoder settings alone and rescale output here. I've not even ticked. So you have got a couple of different rate controls as well. You've got CQP. Now I'm not going to pronounce it because I will get tongue tied, but the CQ level you want somewhere between 15 and 20. And then you've got VBR as well. Now if you're using VBR, you want to use it somewhere between 40,000 and 60,000 kilobytes per second to get good quality um, on bitrate. However, I use CBR and I set that to four and a half thousand kilobytes per second. Now, the reason I do this is because it just gives me a decent level of quality when streaming. Um, if you're using Twitch, you can't go above six and a half thousand kilobytes per second. And if you do, they will drop your stream from, say, 1080p down to 720. Key interval frames you want to leave as two. Now, depending on what GPU you've got, I've got a 1070 Ti and I've got my preset set to max quality. Sorry. Now, if you're using a 1050 Ti or a 1060, you will want to mess around with these presets to get the best image quality you can. If you're using a 1080, 1080 Ti or the RTX cards, you can also use max quality as well. Profile, you want to set to high. Now I've got look ahead and psycho visual tuning enabled as well. And this will come at increased GPU utilization, but does really help the quality. Now, if you've got two GPUs, this is where the GPU part will come in handy. So if you have zero in here, this will be the first graphics card in your system. If you're like me, I've got my second graphics card in there as well. I press one. So this is going to be utilizing OBS just on the second graphics card. 
and max B frames you want to set to two as well. Now you want to click apply. Moving on to recording. Now again, output mode you want as advanced and type you want as standard. Now here you can mess around and you can choose where you want your files to be saved to when you are recording. For me, it's my E drive videos and OBS recordings and generate the file name without spaces, which is pretty good. And you want to select it as MP4. I've noticed with MP4, it's just better quality. If you go with FLV, um, if there's any sort of disconnect or you lose anything, you don't just lose all your recordings but everything's easier to edit in mp4 i've got my audio trackers set as one i've got the nvidia mvinc h264 new again here as well and you can rescale your output here from 1920 to by 1080 and you can enter a custom mux of settings now i don't mess around with this i'll leave it alone so moving on down to rate control now i use vbr or variable bit rate with a bit rate of 50,000 kilobytes per second to a max bit rate of 60,000 kilobytes per second now the reason I do this is it will take up a lot more disk space, but I just find the quality of image a lot better. Keyframing to four of left as two. Now preset. When I'm recording, I use performance. Just it gives me a little bit extra on the graphics card. And then when I obviously go to edit it in, say Adobe, I just can then tweak with the settings there. Profile set as high. Look ahead and psycho visual tuning that I've left as ticked. Again, GPU one, which is the second GPU, and max B frames as two. Now moving on to audio and I've just set everything at 320 bit rate, it uh, just makes things easier and I never use the replay buffer. Now moving on to audio and this is where it's going to get into using that dual desktop setup. So first of all my desktop audio number one is set as my studio speakers, desktop audio two is set as my headphones, my core auxiliary out is my microphone, the one that I'm using now which is the newer NW800. So now you set your dual desktop audio up here, you want to go to control panel. And then you want to go to sound. Now, what you're then going to want to do is use speakers as your default device and your headset as your default communications device. Once you've done that, you then want to go to advanced audio properties and your desktop audio you want to monitor and output. Now, this is desktop audio number one. So this is what everybody's going to hear on your stream. Desktop audio two, you want to monitor off. So only you can hear desktop audio two for your headphones, but your stream can't. So like I said, if you've got Discord open or you're playing music in the background, you can hear it through your headphones here and your stream isn't going to be able to hear it through here. So if you're on Windows 10, you want to go down to the little sound icon down here, right and click and open sound settings. Now, make sure your choice of output device is set as your headphones. And then you want to go down and your advanced sound options, you click on there, find where your game is. Then, for instance, like OBS, you click on the little tap, drop down tab and click speakers. So what this will do is enable your stream to hear everything from the game and you can also hear it through your headphones. What it also does is enables your headphones to be utilized for Discord and music and your stream won't be able to hear it as long as you click this little button here. So we're going to test this now and click sound and we're going to do a test on the speakers. So I'm going to test this and you should be able to hear this and I should be able to hear it as well. I'm then going to click on my headphones. I'm going to test this so I will be able to hear this and you shouldn't. And that makes sure that you've got it set up correctly. Now we're going back into the settings and we're going to go down onto video. So your base canvas resolution. Now this might be different to yours. You might be running 1920 by 1080. Um, I'm running a 2560 by 1440p monitor. So my base resolution is the monitor that I'm streaming off of. I output it to 1920 by 1080. I have the Lansos sharp and scaling 36 samples and my common for FPS value is set at 60. Now, if I do drop a couple of frames, it's normally round to about 58 FPS, but nothing too much um, and still gives a good quality stream as well. Hotkeys, now you can set this up here. I've got none plus as to start and stop recording and then the advanced, which is re really where you want to sort of utilize here as well. So process priority, um, yours will be normal to start with. I have one as above normal. Your render, I have it as Direct 3D 11. Color format, I have it as MV12. I also use color space 709 and the color range as full. And that's pretty much it. And I'll leave everything alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on in and do some more recording and actually see what it looks like. So I'm going to do a little test now. We're going to play some music and then jump on over into some Modern Warfare. <laughs> So that's it playing through my headset. I'm now going to pause it and jump on into Modern Warfare. You owe me a favor. Changing back.
Tracker 3-1, good copy. Strike inbound. Flash, good kill. So there you go, there's the settings that I use in OBS to give you good quality on both my streaming and recording. Now obviously streaming it does depend on your internet connectivity as well, obviously it will pixelate the stream if it does dip and it also will vary on which graphics card you have, whether you have an older one or whether you have a newer graphics card. I'm using a mid-tier card from last generation so yeah it's going to not be as good as the RTX cards but it still does alright. However, if you did like today's video, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Please do leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, or if there's anything else you wish to ask me about OBS, go ahead and share the video. It really does help out the channel. Click that subscribe button, hit that bell icon on your way out for more notifications from myself. I am on Discord, I am on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description down below, so come and say hi. And like always, I shall see you in the next video.